So for those who don't know, I predominantly live in Dallas, Texas. I say predominantly because I'm a bit of a nomad and I'm usually bouncing from city to city, but predominantly I live in Dallas. And I have two friends in Dallas and one day they called me and they said, hey, we want to take you to dinner to talk to you about something. And of course, naturally, my first question was, are you paying? Yeah. Said, sure, I'll listen to you talk while I chomp away at a steak. What they told me was they were starting a new gun company. And so what they wanted to do was create a gun company that created more affordable guns that had the aesthetic and feel of a higher priced gun. And that gun and that company was Rost Martin. And the gun is the RM1C. So what is this RM1C? Well, essentially it's a compact size gun. So you get two magazines with it. You have a 15 rounder, which is flush. If you can see here, grab that bad boy. I have the extended magazine in it, but that's the flush magazine right there. And then you have the extended magazine, which is 17 rounds. So it's a little bit smaller than a 19, but in that same vein, in that same space. And most importantly, because I talked about how it's supposed to be affordable, it's a sub $500 gun. We're talking like 450, 450 ish. And that's MSRP. So who knows what the street price is gonna be? It's gonna be less than that, usually. Before you finish watching this video, a word from our sponsor. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more, visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 today. All the ammo used in this video was brought to you by Nosler, maker of the most innovative, most accurate, and most effective bullets and ammunition in the industry. You have ability to mount a red dot on it with an optic plate. You have these metal rear and front sight. They're not tritium, but you do have the, the white dot up front and you have the blacked out rears. Um, you have the cocking indicator on the back, as you can see there. Um, of course, you have the ability to change grips here, interchangeable grips, change according to your hand size. I stick with the medium because I have medium hands, as some of y'all pointed out in the last video in the comment section. <laughs> the gun is ambidextrous. Um, the ability to drop the mag on this side, drop the mag on that side, lock it back on this side, lock it back on that side. Of course, you have your kind of traditional Glock-ish style trigger with a little flare to it. And of course, you have, you know, your ability to mount a light with the light rail as well. I think this gun visually competes with guns way outside of its price point. Way outside of its price point. And I don't know if the videos are going to do it justice, but I know when I saw it, I was like, damn, that's kind of a good looking gun. And even Peter, as much of an asshole as he is, he said it himself. What did you say, Peter? I said it looks really good. It's a good looking gun. It is actually, and it's and it's it's a good looking gun without trying too hard to look good. Yeah, it's just, like you try. Shut up. It's very clean. <laughs> it's, it's it's a very clean and neat and just a handsome looking firearm. I mean, and then with the finish, the finish on the slide is awesome. It's a tenner for finish. And that was one thing that stood out too, is that the finish on the gun is really nice. It doesn't have that kind of weird ashy kind of look to it that like my hands tend to have sometimes in my videos but but it is a it is a it's a damn good looking gun I, I can't deny that i'm like okay it looks good it's at a great price point but how does it shoot how does a damn gun shoot so as i look into the sun <laughs> it's like five o'clock right now all right Take the recoil of a Glock 19 and bump it up ever so slightly. And I'm, I'm, I hesitate to say this because it's kind of cold out here. So any recoil that I do feel, it's gonna be kind of heightened. So take that with a grain of salt because my hands are cold. And I know for a fact that when my hands are cold, my perception of recoil is heightened. But that being said, it's my favorite transitionary statement, by the way. That being said, the gun is a flat shooter, and I'll show you. Look, just, like, it, it's flat. It's flat, it's flat, it's flat. And that's what I really care about with the gun that shoots. Now, with guns in this price point, you're usually giving up something. There's, there's some takeaway. Either the gun is ugly, or the ergonomics feel terrible. So we already established this gun is not ugly. At least I don't think it's ugly, Peter doesn't think it's ugly, and that's really all that matters. But from an ergonomic standpoint, this gun feels really great in hand and it's kind of kind of weird because it almost feels too good in my hands. It feels really good and, and a lot of it has to do with, I don't know, I don't know. I think it just works with my hands. Even down to sometimes when guns have this like this stippling 
at the front of the slide. It's great, but my hands don't actually reach it. It's, it's there, but I'm not really naturally, intuitively going to put it there. This does it naturally. Even on this other side, when I'm actually shooting the gun here, like it's naturally, it just sits there. And the gun just sits in your hand. And look at that, look at, oh man. I don't know if the video's catching this, but like that slide is teeny. Something serious right now. That that slide is beautiful. I'm sorry, it's sheening something serious. But anyway, um, oh, and I almost forgot to talk about the trigger guard. The trigger guard, for me, for me, a lot of the times I get mad at some companies because I'm like, stop rounding off your trigger guards all the damn time. I, for me, it just makes the gun look soft and weak. I, I, it's just me. I like hard right angles and lines. And as you can see here, kind of have this like I don't even know what shape you would call this octagonal shape, so to speak. And I think it works perfectly with this. God, this is a very good looking gun. <laughs> this is, this, and it's not good looking and like, oh my God, that's the coolest looking thing in the world. It's just effortless. From an ergonomic standpoint, like look where that gun sits in my hand. Like I get beautiful access to that freaking bore, right? And I know it's bore access, not access. Trust me, I've, I've got enough crap for that over the years. I get it and I usually butcher it, but whatever. But, but it has a really low bore access in that you get, you get your hand right up under there so it gives you the leverage to kind of run the gun. But then also, like I said, I can get my grip on here and it just, oh. Uh. Okay, that's kind of cool. I can actually see the rounds because the light's coming from behind. So all right, I'm getting distracted and we're losing light. But, um, so when you add the ergonomics and the fact that this gun doesn't really Flip. It just sits on target like most guns and it's actually a lot better than guns in its price point and also guns outside of its price point. So right now I'm, I'm, I know everybody's gonna say, oh, well, they're your friends, so you're biased and that's why you're saying this. No, this is how I really feel. I'm tired of making excuses for why I like certain guns just because, oh, you're gonna be biased. Anyway, I'm getting on soapbox. All right, so from a shooting perspective, for me, like I said, I like to shoot fast, so I'm always like, can I shoot this gun fast? I can shoot it fast, and you can usually shoot most guns fast, but can you shoot it fast with relative ease? Do I have to over overemphasize my fundamentals of shooting? This, no. Like I said, this gun feels at a much pre, this gun feels like a premium product versus Generally speaking, some of the guns that are in the $500 range. There are some good, there are good guns that are in the sub $500 category. Um, but I think this will definitely, at least for now in this first mag, sit at the top of the heap. The trigger on the Ross Martin is your typical, as you can see here, you get this take up. Just take up, boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Now I admit, before we started filming this video, even though this is the first mag, I was shooting it off camera and the trigger was a little gritty and it gave me a little concern. Now, for a sub $500 gun, this is sitting like 450-ish, the trigger was actually a lot better than triggers that I felt in this price category. Um, then I started shooting it and as I started shooting, the trigger started to clean itself up, um, thankfully, because it would suck to have to say that my trigger on my friend's guns Suck. but it would have happened. Anyway, <laughs> um, now I'm not saying this is the best trigger I've ever shot now that it's cleaned up. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying it is it went from being below Glock stock trigger to being just underneath a Glock in terms of a stock Glock trigger feel. So as you see here, you get, you get this wall, boom, 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 and then you get a break and then you get this reset. Boom, the reset is actually really nice. It's a nice reset. Boom, boom here. Now you do get a, ever so slight, you get a little stacking and then it breaks, break. That, that, that reset is actually really, really good. But like I said, the trigger has cleaned up quite a bit since I started shooting it. Um, so where I am right now on the trigger is if it continues to clean up, I think it will start pushing itself into a pretty good Glock, like a good Glock trigger status. Um, if it continues to do it after that, I'd say it'll probably be better than a stock Glock status, largely because it already has a great definable wall. Boom, 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 with a nice take up. Um, you're sitting at about five pounds on a trigger pull. <laughs> God, the other thing was good. But 
This is, this is a $450 gun that if I was going to look at it purely from aesthetics and I say somebody shows me this gun and says, how much do you think this gun's going to run? I'd easily say 650 Easy. 650 I'm going to shoot this thing some more and then come back with a more further in-depth review. But as far as my first mag experience... <laughs> Ooh. Ross Martin, RM1C. I'm looking forward to coming to doing the follow-up on this video. Thankfully, I didn't have to trash my friend's gun because that would have sucked. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.